and welcome to Gara Paint and Pigment, home of the original paint component system for artists and designers. I'm Saren, and today I'm going to show you how easy and fun it is to make your own paint. So what is the basic formula for making your own paint? Well, it's pretty simple. It's pigment dispersion plus binder equals paint. Mix the two together, you've got paint. It's that simple. So what is a dispersion? A dispersion is a liquid pigment concentrate. At Gara Paint, dispersions are our primary focus and specialty as a business. We have over 200 single pigment concentrates. We're pigment collectors, and we have a lot of esoteric pigments with funny names that are actually derived from the original chemical names like uh, benzmedazolone, quinophthalone, isoindolone, quinacridone. We take dry pigment and we grind it the old fashioned way in a ceramic ball mill with surfactant and water with different chemical formulas depending on the individual pigment. All pigments have different uh, requirements for how long they should grind um, and exactly what proportion of surfactant they need. So generally pigments grind between 24 and 48 hours. And as I said, we do it the old fashioned way in a ceramic ball mill. And this process uh, gives you the cleanest, purest, most brilliant color. Nowadays, most dispersions are made with steel blade mixers, which just does not give you as fine of a grind as the ceramic ball mill process. So although it is the more difficult way to go, it's a lot of heavy labor, we believe in the quality of color and we're willing to make that sacrifice for you, the artists and designers. Um, so enough talk, let's make some paint. Make the paint, you start, with your container and you grab your binder. I'm going to use a high resin binder here. This is called acrylic 65. This is the highest resin content on the market. Um, what that means is you can do the most with it. It's like an all purpose acrylic. You can thicken it way up. You can thin it way down. You could throw a bunch of texture and filler into it. Um, you can oversaturate it with the pigment concentrate. It can do many, many things. So, you start with the binder. The binder is going to determine your paint volume. So I want to make about a half a cup of paint, so that's approximately how much I'm putting in my cup. Then you take your pigment concentrate, otherwise known as a dispersion, uh, give it a little tap and give it a really good shake. We do not put any fillers or additives into our dispersions because we believe in pure color. The downside of that is that you can get some settling of the pigment content. So especially with cadmiums, cobalts, chromiums, metal pigments, you can get a little settling. So we like to always insist that you give it a little tap and a shake before use. Now, because we do the ceramic ball mill process, the pigments are at their finest grind and eight grind. Um, and that gives you the finest tinting strength. All pigments have different tinting strengths, but um, the Snapfall Vermilion here actually has a very good tinting strength. So a little bit goes a long way. Give it a little squirt. And you stir. Now, acrylics are milky when they're wet, but they dry clear. So I'm actually at full saturation right now. You just want to stir it until it's thoroughly mixed. That looks good to me. Um, you only want to add as much pigment as it takes to get to full saturation. Many people ask, well, what's the ratio? Um, as I mentioned before, all pigments have different tinting strengths. We say that a dispersion makes between 8 and 16 times its volume. Um, on the low end would be like an earth color that an, a one ounce pigment, which is this size, would make you about eight ounces of paint, whereas a phthalo pigment, same size, would make you about a pint of paint. So it just depends on what color you're using. Also, this process is very much like cooking. It's very much to your own taste. So if you want to oversaturate it, as I mentioned, you can because this binder can handle it. So why not? Let's add a little more color. But once you've hit full saturation and the color looks like the color in the dispersion bottle or it's not getting any darker, you really don't need to add any more pigment because it's not going to make it any brighter. Okay. So you saw how easy that was. Binder plus dispersion, I've got paint. 
Now comes the fun part. Let's add a little thickener. This is thickener number one. This is a rheology modifier. Uh, this is going to react with the pH in the acrylic. So I'm going to add about one to five percent. That's the rough estimate. That's a little squirt basically. And the key here is to go really quickly in one direction as though I were an electric mixer. Keep it nice and even and keep it going for about 10 seconds. And you'll feel it thicken up on you. And then uh, it will continue to thicken a little bit for a few more seconds so you might want to wait before you add more. Once it gets really stiff, you don't want to go any farther. I am going to put a little bit more in here. Another dose. I'm trying to bring it to the point of being really stiff. Okay. There. That's the ticket. That's what I was looking for. Okay. So the other point about the high resin acrylic, as you can see here, you see how that big peak there, that is not going to shrink a whole bunch on you like a regular gel medium usually will because gel mediums usually have a lot of water and filler because you have such high resin solids in this acrylic, it's pretty much going to be what you see is what you get. This thickener, it's called thickener number two, and you can use it in addition to thickener number one to change the viscosity and make it a little bit more um, sticky, honey-like, like an oil paint. So again, add a little dose, one to five percent, spin it around. This urethane thickener, number two, as I just mentioned, is actually meant for urethane, but it works in addition to the thickener number one with acrylic to give it this different texture and it makes it kind of stretchy. Gives it more drag and if I add even a little bit more it can be really stretchy and pulley like a tar gel. So I can actually make strings. So those are the basics of making your own paint. There are many other possibilities. The possibilities are actually endless. Uh, we have many other demonstrations showing how you can use dry fillers to make your own paint, you can make metallics, pearlescence, what have you, anything you want to do. In fact, people often uh, come here with a certain idea of what they want to do and we help them figure out how to do it. So please just give us a call if you have any questions or you have a particular idea you'd like to work with us on. Our number is 212-529-0628. That's all for now. Thanks a lot.